Hi, Karen Lebo with VintageDazzle.Etsy.com here to do a monthly sales report for the month of March 2019 and I'm just going to show you some of the better, more profitable, or more interesting sales that I had during the month of March. And um, these prices for the most part do not include shipping. The um, buyer pays shipping and uh, what else do I need to point out I think that's everything for now uh, so the first item I want to show you is this um, hand-painted polychrome Persian mirror uh, this I bought at the flea market for twenty dollars really pretty piece and uh, I paid twenty dollars for it and it sold for a hundred and twenty five And this is an Avon ring, turned out to be real uh, sterling silver and real jade. And that, let's see, oh, and blue, and blue topaz. And I paid $9 for that at the flea market, and it sold for $38. And this is a piece of cast iron, just a little bit of architectural salvage. I bought four of these at the flea market. I paid uh, $15 for all four, so that's $3.75 a piece. And I have sold one, and this one sold for $36. And this is a Napier gold tone bib necklace. I got that, I don't know where I got that. I only paid $3 for it, and I can't remember. But uh, I sold it for $35. And this was a really cool piece. This is an Art Deco style blowtorch. And uh, this came from my friend Caroline, who appeared briefly in one of my videos recently. Um, as she was moving, she was getting rid of stuff, and she didn't really even know why she had these. She had two of them, um, but she just gave them to me. And uh, sold it for $45. I have another one. It's not quite as cool as this one. And this is the La Cucaracha Mexican Sterling Silver Necklace and Earring Set, which uh, got a lot of comments when I showed it in the haul video from the flea market. Um, I did pay $95 for it, but I sold it for $175, and I was able to flip it pretty quickly. And one of my YouTube peeps bought it. Thank you. You know who you are. And uh, this is Middle Eastern turquoise this this um, particular design element with the little like sunbursts that look like this is uh, one way you can tell something is Middle Eastern beautiful clear blue piece of turquoise and there it is I uh, sold let's see I paid ten dollars for that pretty pretty sure that was at the flea market and sold it for 48. And uh, this is a garnet dome ring made with 950 silver, which is um, a sign that it's older, probably, you know, maybe 1920s. Um, also that it could be European. And let's see, I paid $9 for that at the flea market and sold it for 42 And this is a turquoise and sterling silver concho belt buckle. And that I paid $15 for at the flea market, and it sold for $64. These were a couple of German plates. They're called Ceramic Harlander. And I did sell them both to the same person. So I paid uh, $4 a piece for them and sold them, the pair of them, for $90. So that's a, uh, they're kind of, um, a, what do you call it, Majolica style, really pretty. And um, I didn't know much about them. I still don't know a whole lot about them, but anyway. Uh, okay, then there's this um, mogul style bracelet. I learned that's what you call this. And I uh, got this. 
at the flea market. I paid 10 for it. It was missing a lot of stones, so I had to replace a lot of stones on it. Um, but I was able to sell it for 65 And this is a Bowcraft Sterling mid-century set. I was really unhappy with these photos. <laughs> I just struggled with these so much. I tried and tried and just couldn't get a good... But, you know, the earrings, when they're those screw back, they won't, they won't lay flat. And anyway, but eventually it did sell. Uh, this came from my mother-in-law, so I paid nothing for those and sold the set for 34 And this is a, a Brutalist cuff bracelet, tricolor metal, gold tone, silver tone, and copper. Probably uh, brass, copper, and that's, I don't think it's real silver. Let's see. No, it's not. And uh, got that at the flea market for $5 and sold it for 38 And uh, during that haul video, I recounted the story that the lady told me that her artist friend had sold these bracelets at... Uh, oh, I just blanked on it. Um, Woodstock. Whoa. And, uh, but then I, I actually found a signature in one of the two bracelets that dated him to the 1970s. So not Woodstock, but still cool. And uh, this sold to the same person. It's a can of teal spun silver bracelet, a uh, panel bracelet, just in faultless condition. Really beautiful. Paid 20 for that and sold it for 38 And this is a Korok tray with these little inlaid wood and brass kitty cats. Got that at the rummage sale for $2 and sold it for 34 And I still have the smaller tray available with just the one cat on it. And these are some really pretty big turquoise earrings. Navajo made, uh, paid 20 for those at the flea market and sold them for 63 And another piece of Native American Navajo turquoise and sterling silver, a little pendant necklace. And uh, that sold for, I paid 15 for that, and it sold for 62 And yet another piece. This is a bracelet that I paid 24 at the flea market and also sold for 62 And there's there was more. I decided you didn't need to see it all, but there was more Native American jewelry that I sold. It was a really good month for that. In fact, it was a really good month overall. Um, let's see. This is a diamond ring with four diamonds and a white gold. Sorry, yellow gold. It just looks white in this picture. Um, that, I, I got that from my friend when she was cleaning out her garage. She gave me a bunch of stuff. Has never let me pay her anything for it. And so, paid nothing for that and sold it for $199. And a pair of Mexican silver earrings with pretty, pretty markings on the uh, malachite stone. And let's see, I paid ten dollars for those at the flea market and sold them for thirty-five. And this is a red silk Japanese kimono that I could have sold three times over. This came from my sister-in-law, so I paid nothing for that. And it sold for ninety-nine dollars. And after it sold, I had two people contact me and say, What happened to the kimono? And I had to break the news to them that someone else had bought it. So yeah, that was a popular, popular item. And uh, this is a Oaxacan, Mexico embroidered velvet cape. The sides were not sewn up. It was more of a poncho. And it was, I believe it was machine embroidering. But it was still a really, really pretty piece. And... I paid nothing for that. Came from my sister-in-law, sold it for 45 And these are some African trade beads. Uh, they are actually Venetian. I'm, I'm a little fuzzy on how the whole African trade bead thing works. But the these cane beads 
are they're kind of an opaque glass they're not like the clear glass that you you usually see from Murano uh, and then they're paired with these wooden beads and they come from Africa and they are very collectible and I paid nothing for those they came from my sister-in-law and I sold them for 65 and another pair of sterling silver Earrings. These ones were signed by Aaron Todlena. Todlena. I don't know how you say his name, uh, but that is a very, very desirable uh, designer, Native American designer. And so, let's see, where am I? Uh, oh, I paid twenty for those and sold them for seventy-five. This is a cool piece. A really big. A kind of a nautilus shell in a sterling silver setting and I paid 16 for that at the flea market and it sold for 45 this is another one of my weird purchases it is a chess set inside a lucite box and I paid I just one of those things I couldn't walk away from I paid 25 for it and sold it for 72. I did have to wait a while for just the right buyer to come along. And this is um, a Costa Boda style Samerso teardrop vase. Great big, really heavy thing. I got it at a garage sale for $15 and it sold for $95. And again, I did have to wait quite a, a period of time for the right buyer to come along. And this is a cast iron with a brass finish. Uh, architectural salvage great this came from my friend Caroline I paid nothing for that and sold it for 48 apologize I don't know why an ambulance always has to come by or a fire truck whenever I'm getting ready to do a video this is a darling little Chinese cloisonne piece now in general I say cloisonne doesn't sell that well but in the case of these articulated fishes they do I paid five dollars for this I believe at the rummage sale uh, the silver the metal parts on it are sterling silver and it they date this one dates from around the 1930s and um, where'd he go paid five for him and sold him for forty five dollars that was with free shipping and this is a Royal Copenhagen Copenhagen ceramic tile from the 1960s I did discover that it had a rather desirable designer named Johan Berger Baca and these very collectible tiles this one sold for $55 and I paid a dollar for it at the flea market or at the rummage sale rather and this is a Japanese Damascene necklace kind of an unusual style little choker necklace with these little scalloped round pieces and those I got from my mother-in-law, paid nothing for them, and it sold for 32 And this is an antique or vintage uh, drafting set. Um, I got that at the flea market. I paid $10 for it, and it sold for 57 And uh, this was a great buy. These were some nice leather-bound volumes. Uh, first edition books. I paid 25 for those at the flea market, did a little research on them, and found out they were first editions, and they sold for $250. Wahoo! And this is an inlaid Hudson, uh, let's see, what does it say? Um, Hudson River Inlay Marquetry Birds. These sell for different prices. Some are more desirable than others. This happened to be a pretty good one paid three dollars for it at the flea market and sold it for 78 and last we have these filet crochet eight placemats uh, I paid 20 for those at the flea market and sold them for 48 and that's it thanks for watching my timer is getting ready to run out so I'm gonna scoot but uh, look for me at vintagedazzle.etsy.com and I'll be back soon with probably a vlog bye bye